Welcome back to Summer Racing Quick Flicks. Today we're going to talk about the differences between mild camshafts and aggressive camshafts and which is right for your application. So it's time to call Summit and, and, and ask for some advice on which camshaft is going to work best for your, your vehicle application. Um, you may come to find that we're probably going to ask you quite a few more questions than you may expect. Uh, mainly, we're going we're gonna to start with the type of engine, of course. We're going to start asking you specifics about that engine, though. What the compression ratio is, uh, what type of cylinder heads you may be using, type of intake manifold is on the, on the engine, carburation, does the vehicle engine have headers. Um, as well, we may ask about your rear gearing, your tire size, torque converter stall if you have an automatic transmission, and the type of vehicle that the engine is actually in. The reason for this is all these are going to come together for, to help us make a selection of a camshaft that's best for your complete application and not just which camshaft is going to make the most horsepower. The reality is, is that peak horsepower numbers really don't translate into max vehicle performance. What we're looking for is we're looking to go ahead and place a camshaft in your engine that's going to make the best overall horsepower, meaning from beginning to end in the power band. We can select a camshaft for you that's real peaky as far as it's going to make max horsepower at 6,500 RPM, but is that really usable horsepower in your application? Is that the type of driving you're doing with that vehicle? A lot of times we come to find that, that, that customers are interested in camshafts that are going to make the vehicle to perform best, but unrealistically they're going to expect us to pick a really large camshaft for that application that's not going to do so. Once you've supplied all the information that we requested from you, we're going to go ahead and take an evaluation of that information. And, and we're going to look at a lot of things as far as cam profiles go and what's available for your engine combination. Um, you're going to come to find that there's a, going to be a wide range of camshafts available uh, between camshaft styles as far as flat tap as comparison to rollers, as far as duration numbers, lift numbers, um, and all of these are going, to, are going to play into our decision. In most cases, we're going to go ahead and decide to stick with whatever you had in the engine to begin with as far as cam style goes, whether you had a flat tap and a roller, because it's going to be the easiest transition to the new camshaft, I meaning that's not going to cost you a lot of extra money to change things like push rod length, uh, lifter designs, uh, and we may even be able to get away with a stock type valve spring instead of upgrading to a larger valve spring, in which case now we have to go ahead and machine the spring pockets in the head to accept the larger valve spring. Once we've taken that complete evaluation, we're going to look at your, your driving, the driving of the vehicle as well. We're going, to, we're going to look at, okay, how is the vehicle mainly going to be used? Because an engine can necessitate or accept an extremely large camshaft and it'll perform with it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to make the type of horsepower that's going to perform properly in the type of vehicle that you're putting it in and the way of, that you're going to plan on driving the vehicle. You know, the camshaft that I'm going to select for a drag race vehicle is going to be completely different than the camshaft I'm going to select for our, maybe a road race car. Well, as well as if we look at like a street strip application in comparison to a towing application. What you're going to come to find though is all these camshafts are going to have drastic, drastically different characteristics from one another as far as idle quality goes, um, engine vacuum characteristics, um, requirements when it comes to the torque converter that's going to be necessary to, to support that type of camshaft as well. What you'll come to find in most cases is that the mild camshaft is the right choice for your engine, especially if it's if it's a vehicle that's driven regularly. You're going to experience much better a much better driving experience in the end with the mild camshaft over the extremely large camshaft, which will sound great and it'll grab a lot of attention, but it's going to go ahead and be harder on valve train parts. Um, it's going to require much more maintenance, and the drivability of that vehicle is going to go down as an end result. If you want to go ahead and start looking at cam profiles that may fit your application best of, let's, let's get into the numbers a little bit as far as what they actually mean and what you should be looking for. Um, like we mentioned, you know, the application is the key to all this. And let's say we have like a towing application and we're, and we're looking for a camshaft for that specific vehicle type. Uh, what you're going to be looking for is some specific duration numbers and some lobe separation numbers. I will tell you that lift numbers kind of lie meaning that a camshaft can have a lot of lift or a little lift, but it really is dependent on the engine type, 
when it comes to lift numbers and what performs best in, in that style of engine. So we kind of stay away from really focusing on lift numbers. We look more at the duration and load separation numbers and what's going to work. A towing application, we'd be looking at duration at 50 numbers, probably somewhere in the range of 210 to 215, and a load separation that's a little higher, somewhere between 112 to 114. That style of camshaft is going to have very smooth idle quality, but it's going to make a lot of low end torque as well meaning it's going to respond really well as soon as you hit that gas pedal without a lot of changes on top of it all. This type of camshaft is not going to require a stall converter or a ton of compression or a high rise or intake or anything of that nature to perform like it's supposed to. It's not going to be a very peaky camshaft. It's going to have a broad power band way down low in the RPM band. If we were looking for a street camshaft or a mild camshaft as, as, as we would call it, uh, we're probably going to be looking for a camshaft with, with uh, duration numbers at 50 around that 215 to 225 range, even up to 230 actually, I've seen them go as high as that, um, with a lobe separation between 110 to 114, depending on the cam profile, as well as depending on if we had maybe like a power adder like nitrous or a supercharger or, or, or something like that. Um, in this application though, gearing becomes a little more important as well. You know, you don't want to go ahead and have a 230 duration camshaft with a 273 gear. You know, the, the car is not going to want to accelerate properly at that point. Um, it's going to make the torque converter act a little funny as well if we had an automatic transmission. So we kind of want to pay attention to those little aspects. Then you get into race profiles. Race profiles can, can range all over the place depending on the type of racing that's being done. Uh, I have seen race camshafts with 220 duration to 50 all the way up to, you know, 270, 280 durations at 50, um, depending on the type of racing that's being done and where we expect that engine to make power for that specific racing. Um, and, the, and the lobe separations kind of follow suit as well as far as, you know, you can go to a 106 to a, a, a 114 duration depending on the type of racing that you're doing and how you want that vehicle to respond when you hit the gas pedal. Now remember, you start getting lower in those lobe separation numbers, the vacuum goes away completely. So if you, have, if you have power brakes, a transmission that has a vacuum modulator, or worst, worst case scenario, something like a 76 Corvette, where every single thing is vacuum operated on that vehicle, you put a 106, 108 lobe separation camshaft in that car, it'll sound great, but nothing's gonna work on it. Your headlight doors aren't gonna open, your heater controls main stop working, everything kinda, kinda goes to the wayside. So remember, you gotta look at the, com the complete combination as a whole as an end, to really choose the proper camshaft for your vehicle. Before you make the final decision on which camshaft you want to go with, there is one last thing to consider, and that is that there's a lack of zinc in today's oils. This lack of zinc is creating a lot of problems for flat tap of camshafts, meaning that the oil is really not bonding to the part, especially since the camshaft is kind of one of the last things to get oiled in the engine. And we're getting a lot of lifter and load wear issues because of this. If you're going to go with a hydraulic flat tappet camshaft or any flat tappet camshaft for that matter, make sure that you place the zinc additive in with every oil change. This will go ahead and give the oil the proper bonding um, property so that you don't have excessive cam wear throughout that hydraulic flat tappet camshaft's life. Um, with all the variables involved with selecting the proper camshaft for your vehicle, uh, remember we do highly suggest that you contact our tech department at 330-630-0240. Um, so that you can get some good advice on which camshaft to try for your application. And remember, like many things in life, bigger is not always better. For more quick flicks, visit the Summit Racing YouTube channel. Visit Summit Racing online at www.summitracing.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com backslash summit racing. Or like Summit Racing on Facebook at facebook.com backslash summit racing equipment.